Hey everyone, my name is Perry and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 4 Episode 7 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. <laughs> that is exactly how I felt when I was working on the space shuttle and thank God that my coworkers were patient with me because it's it's not like it's rocket science. <laughs> I was tasked with developing wire harnesses for the command module and space shuttle called Dream Chaser. The initial version will not house any astronauts. It's meant to be a cargo craft that can go to low Earth orbit, specifically the International Space Station. This spaceship can land at your local airport if necessary and be sent right back to the ISS shortly afterwards. An astronaut aboard the ISS can literally ask for anything to be sent up and within 24 hours, Dream Chaser can get it to them. Or if they wanted to send something back to Earth, within 24 hours it can be done, reducing the amount of time we can hardware interface in low Earth orbit. My rule of thumb is if the company you're working for posts details about the project that you're currently assigned to, to their social media page, then whatever they post is free game. You can talk about it openly with friends, family, the internet, anyone. Besides that, I would keep the other details just to yourself. There's no need to share everything with everybody. Dr. Senku. Resistance thermometers are measuring, I mean, I guess, yeah, how much a metal resists the current flowing through it. Higher resistance means higher temperature. Certain metals, most famously platinum, act like mood rings for temperature. When the environment is cool, platinum lets electric current flow through it with ease, almost like a polite doorman opening the gate for you. However, as the heat cranks up, the doorman gets a bit grumpy, increasing resistance to the current, and the old boy locks you out. That thermometer that they're talking about is very real. You can get it off Amazon for 20 bucks. What is shown in this photo is not the thermometer. That's actually, the end of that is off the screen. This is the temperature control kit. On Amazon, you can buy this whole apparatus that Senku was talking about for under 100 bucks. How does he know that? This is a little bit exaggerated. The astronauts do have somewhat of a budget. They can't go and buy a Rolex and stay in a penthouse near the Kennedy or Johnson space stations. If they go overboard with this, NASA might ask like, hey man, do you really need a tomahawk and lobster dinner every day that ends in a Y? Is there maybe a chance you can reserve that for a Wednesday evening or something? Goodness. Before they start talking, this is exactly what the Johnson Space Station looks like. You can walk where Senku's walking, you can stand where he's standing and pose just like that and take a selfie. Whoa! That exact engine powered the second stage of the Saturn 1B launch used to place astronauts into Earth's orbit for the Apollo Lunar Program and three Skylab missions. Five engines on the S-11 second stage of the Saturn 5 launch were used for the Apollo man missions to the moon, starting with the uncrewed Apollo 4 mission in 1967. It launched 27 astronauts with six successful missions, landing men on the moon. It also launched Skylab, America's first space station, into orbit on its final mission. At 363 feet tall and 6.2 million pounds when fueled, it remains the tallest, heaviest, and most powerful rocket ever brought to operational status. And then, Elon Musk happened. <laughs> Those are a lot of big words. Okay, 
The, the one that sticks out to me most is hydrophobicity. That's a very, very long word that basically means repels water. Break it down into hydro, meaning water, and phobic, meaning fear, or in this case, aversion. Scientists, maybe, but engineers don't talk like that. It always starts off with, can you see my screen? If you're virtual over VPN, and then it's very quickly, why does that not do what I want it to do? It's just simple as that. Use simple words, get your point across, get your question answered, and move on. You don't need to prove to everyone in the office that you're smart. No, gasoline. I, I was wondering when this thing was gonna show up again. Now, imagine that you're at the most exclusive dance party in the universe, where the dancers are atoms and their secret weapon is a tiny built-in magnet. This is the world of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Every atom has a little spin, a bit like a top spinning with its own magnetic personality. When you bring these atoms into a super strong magnetic field, like the ultimate VIP lounge of molecules, they all line up in a neat row ready to boogie. Now imagine the engineer, or DJ, drops a special radio frequency beat and this pulse shakes up the party, nudging the atoms out of their perfect alignment. They absorb the energy, momentarily showing off their coolest dance moves. Carbon is twirling, hydrogen flipping, two hydrogen atoms next to each other will start breakdancing, three next to each other will start twirling just like the carbon atoms do. As the music fades, the atoms will settle back into their original positions, releasing energy in this process. This released energy is like secret messages from the dancers, each telling a unique story about their local environment in the molecule. Scientists captured these messages to place together within the structure of the molecule, much like solving a puzzle with clues that each dancer's signature move. When there's more twirling, then you know there's three hydrogen on a carbon molecule. If no one's breakdancing, then you will not find two hydrogen attached to anything. Credit for the discovery of NMR goes to Isidore Isaac Rabi, who received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1944. While studying in Germany in the 1920s, he became good friends with one particular student who didn't go on to win a Nobel Prize, though certainly left his mark on the world. That other student who become a lifelong friend of Robbie's was J. Robert Oppenheimer. 